A comprehensive ultrasound examination of the knee includes 10 standard views, but in this exercise we will perform the following three views. A suprapatellar longitudinal view, a suprapatellar transverse view with maximal flexion, and an infrapatellar longitudinal view of the knee. The knee includes the condyles of the distal femur, proximal tibia, and the head of the fibula. Anterior to these structures is the patella. The four tendons of the quadriceps muscles join to form the quadriceps tendon. At its inferior end, it is attached to the patellar ligament. The suprapatellar bursa is a potential space between the quadriceps muscle and femur that reduces friction between the two surfaces. With the probe marker pointed proximally, place the probe over the proximal end of the patella. Identify the patella, quadriceps tendon, and the femur. The suprapatellar bursa typically contains just a few cc's of fluid and may not be visible. Ask the patient to flex the knee. With the probe marker pointed to the patient's right, place the probe over the distal femur. Slide the probe distally to obtain an optimal image of the condyles of the femur. Identify the quadriceps tendon, the femoral condyle, and the articular cartilage. With the probe marker pointed proximally, place the probe over the distal end of the patella. Track the patellar ligament to the tibia. Identify the patellar ligament, the fat pad, and the tibia. The anisotropy artifact is a phenomenon that can occur when the probe is not positioned perpendicular to the tendon being imaged with ultrasound. In this suprapatellar image of the knee, the quadriceps tendon is largely hyperechoic. When the probe is rocked slightly to make the ultrasound beam not perpendicular to the tendon fibrils, hypoechoic or dark areas seem to appear within it. This artifact not only leads to suboptimal imaging, but can lead to errors in interpretation. Hypoechoic areas in the tendon could suggest tendonitis or tendon injury and lead to a misdiagnosis. The reason for this is because in structures with smooth boundaries, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Thus, the probe will receive the ultrasound beam only if it incinates the fibrils of the tendon at 90 degrees.